Oh, hello, hello, hello! My friends, Scotty J here, back again with another episode of Nine Hours, Nine Persons, and Nine Doors. Now, we have been given a choice. Which door do we want to go through? Ace and Clover want to go through door one. Lotus and Seven want to go through door two. And June and Santa want to go through door six. Well, I think this time we'll be going through door six. Haha. -ha. I want to go through door six. Junpei flipped over the piece of paper. It read, Junpei, door six. Of course it did. He'd written it after all. Hmm, that's a problem. June spoke barely above a whisper, but they all knew what she said. None of these teams will be able to go through the doors they want. Clover and I chose door one. Lotus and I chose door two. That's not enough people to open a numbered door, however. The digital routes don't match up either. We got a similar problem. June, Junpei, and I want to go through door six. But our digital route is five. If we're going to open that door, we need a one. Damn. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do? Hmm. Junpei crossed his arms and did his best to put his thoughts in order. The others followed suit, but with little result. Eventually, it was Clover that broke the silence. Why don't Seven and Lotus go through one with me? Her face was cold and flat, as was her voice, but her logic was sound. Seven and Lotus looked at one another. Seven plus eight plus four equals 19. One plus nine equals 10. One plus zero equals one. I will say, the amount of times you've added something up to 19 in this game, redonkulous. At least like five times by now. Anyway. The first problem solved. It was Ace that spoke up. Wh what about me? Isn't that obvious? Wasn't one of the teams just complaining they didn't have a one? You mean I should join Santa's team? Clover nodded, her face still cold and emotionless. Her attitude and posture could not have been more different than the energetic girl of only a few hours before. No one seemed ready to contradict her. Her response was understandable, given the horrible situation in which she had found herself. But even so... I understand. I will go through door six, then. If we do as Clover has suggested, we can all pass through a numbered door. No one will get left behind. This seems to be the most reasonable solution. 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 1 equals 15. 1 plus 5 equals 6. 7, Lotus, what do you guys think? Uh, I don't have a problem with it. Me either. Alright then, we're good to go. And off they go. At last, Junpei and the other six had managed to separate themselves into two teams. Clover, 7, and Lotus headed to A deck, where door 1 was, near the main staircase. Junpei, Jun, Ace, and Santa, however, took the elevator to E-Deck. The ride to E-Deck was a silent one. Alright, let's go! Santa's words jolted them to action, and they stepped out of the elevator into a long, straight hallway. Before long, they arrived in front of door 6. One by one, they put their palms over the red. With a soft electronic noise, it authenticated each of them. The door opened, and all at once, the four of them had leapt through it. Fortunately, the dead was located easily enough. This one had been placed quite close to the door they'd entered through. They gathered around it quickly and hurriedly placed their palms upon it, for authentication, one by one. Phew! Ah. Hmm. Ah. It stopped. Yes, it stopped. The countdown had ceased, but Junpei's heart was still pounding in his chest, like a frantic thunderous drum. It felt as though it might shake itself up and out of his throat. He'd been through doors three times before, but repetition had not dulled the experience. He was not anxious to find, anxious to find it dulled, however. He'd hoped to be free of this ridiculous game long before that happened. 
All right, let's go. With that attempt at good humor, Junpei took a deep breath and began to walk. He jogged down the stairs at the end of the hallway and found himself staring at a large door. It was a heavy thing, made of iron, and more than a little threatening. He took hold of the bar that served as its doorknob and shoved it down. The room beyond stopped him in his tracks. It was gargantuan and made entirely of metal, none of the accents of, or wood or tile that he'd seen on the rest of the ship. This room was purely functional, but utterly tremendous. Whoa, what the hell is this? Santa got a few words before awe stole the rest of them. The rest were too stunned to offer anything more than gasps. It was easily the largest room they'd seen, and yet it was somehow closed and oppressive. The ceiling was at least two stories high, if not significantly more. It was easily several hundred feet across, and appeared to stretch the entire width of the ship. In the center of that gargantuan room stood a massive, rounded building. Even from a distance, the sheer bulk of it was oppressive. Jubei could feel the room, the building, even the air pressing down on him. Junpei and the others were standing on scaffolding that crisscrossed the whole area. The proper term, I guess, was catwalk, Junpei thought, although that didn't seem particularly important. All right, let's head downstairs. Nearby was a long iron staircase that made its way eventually to the floor beneath them. They moved around towards the opposite side of the massive building following the catwalk. They hadn't said much as they walked, but as they approached the building, Ace suddenly spoke up. This looks to be the steam engine room. The steam engine room? Yes, the thing that looks like a cross-section of a mushroom is the boiler. Do you see the three round doors near the bottom? Coal is put into those and burned, which heats the water, producing steam. The same thing that drives a steam engine. This one is simply somewhat larger. I, I see. Even if Ace was right, the boiler was boiling nothing as they approached it. The entire room was as silent as the grave. Suddenly, Junpei heard a noise behind him. He turned just in time to see June collapse to her knees. Hey, what's wrong? Are you alright? He dashed towards her and wrapped his arm around her shoulder to steady her. It was then that he noticed. You, you're really warm. Is your fever coming back? Yes, yes it probably is, but I'm fine. Please don't worry about me. I just need to rest and I'll be fine. Her voice was weak and forced, and it was a great deal more than her, and it said a great deal more than her words did. Jubei carried her to the nearest wall and propped her up against it. She let her head fall back against the wall, as if she no longer had the strength to support it, and drew a ragged breath. Her eyes were empty, as if she was having trouble focusing them, and even speaking seemed difficult for her. Jupe felt his hand ball into a fist and clenched tight, his knuckles whitening. He had to find a way out, and quickly. He turned and looked at Ace and Santa in turn. They might not have shared the depths of his emotion, but they certainly shared his concern. He didn't need words to express the urgency of their situation. All right, let's get started. Hang in there, June. I'm gonna get you out of here real soon. She managed a small nod before leaning back to rest her head on the wall. All right, it is go time in the steam engine room. Now, if we look, this is actually like a massive room. Like, look how big this is. Right? Super fun. And there's two floors. Even more fun. Let's get going. A tunnel. Uh, it goes all the way across the ship. I'd say this is probably here to move coal from place to place. Probably comes from over there. And then the belt carries it down the tunnel and out here. So if the conveyor belt was moving, yes, the coal would almost certainly come out here. Interesting. All right. What this? 
Ah, it's empty. Okay. Well, we'll leave that be for now. Nothing there, it would seem. Let's spin on around. There's a ladder. Oh, actually, there's a bunch of boxes first. There's a bunch of wooden boxes over here by the wall. I already looked through those. There's nothing there. Fair enough. Hey, let's climb. Oh, boy. Climb again. We got this door. Let's spin it. One of the doors on the furnace. There's an A on it. There's a circular wheel in the center of the door. All right, let's give that sucker a twist. Woohoo! Well, it's noisy, but it opens. And it's totally pitch black in there. We should, um, go in there. All right. Let's go. Woohoo, we made it. Hmm, this looks just like the door we went into. Uh, where are we? We must be on the other side, yes? Which would put us directly above the conveyor belt. At any rate, we should keep moving. There's a great deal we've yet to investigate. Fair. See? Hmm, not see. Well, let's go over here. Oh, I realized what I said, my bad. Hmm, it looks like a hand-operated winch. But it doesn't look like there's any way to, uh, operate it. Hmm, that means the wheel isn't attached. Okay, so we gotta go find a wheel, I guess. Pop over to the other side, then. Can we steal the wheel off a door? Please? Does not seem to be the case. Oh, well. Hey, there's another winch over here. Alright, let's give this wheel a spin. What? That's weird. I don't feel any resistance. Gah! Ah, shit. We got a wheel. Yay! Good job, genius. You broke it. I didn't break it. It broke all by itself. Well, that means we can go back to the other side now. Ha-ha. Ho-ho. Hee-hee. Do-da-la-la-la-la. La-la-la. La-la-la. The hand-operated winch. Um, there's no wheel to turn. Oh, yeah. I got this wheel I pulled off the other winch, don't I? Let's see if it fits. Woohoo! Sweet! It's a perfect fit. Like they were made for each other. Not shaky at all. Good. I should be able to turn this now. Good work, Junpei. We should all... We should be able to haul up that wooden box now. You see the wooden box? It's under the catwalk. Can you see it? It's hanging from the rope on the winch, isn't it? It looks like there's some sort of device in that box. I'm not sure what it is. At any rate... Might as well turn that wheel now. I'm counting on you. Freaking Ace telling us he's gonna... This is our first escape room with Ace, isn't it? Hey, that's fun. All right, I'll turn the wheel. Huh? What's this? What happened? The wheel only turns to the left. It only turns to the left? That means we can't reel up that rope. Yeah. We can only let the rope down. Interesting. I don't think that will be a problem, though. We will simply need to go downstairs after letting the wooden box down. I'll be counting on you, Junpei. Uh, sure thing. No sweat. I believe the box has reached the floor. Yeah. He stuck his head out over the side of the catwalk and looked down. The box that had only recently hung just below the catwalk now sat on the floor. It had come to rest near the end of the tunnel that covered the conveyor belt. Near where June had collapsed. Junpei could see her, still leaning against the wall as if she'd barely had the strength to sit up. Even from so far away, it was not difficult to see that she had not improved. He almost thought he could see the heat rising from her body. She doesn't seem to be improving. Ace's expression was inscrutinable, but he had said what they had been thinking. Well, of course not. She's not just going to get better right away, you know? It'll take time. He tried desperately to convince himself that what he'd said was true. What could be causing this, I wonder? Illness, perhaps? Nah, it's gotta be exhaustion. Sanders' response was confident and certain. She got dropped in some weird-ass ship, forced to play some messed-up game. If you think about it, it's a lot weirder that we aren't freaking out like just like her, you know? So you're saying we're abnormal? Yeah. We're just running around this room solving all these puzzles... Like it's just business as usual. How the hell do you call that normal? We're just guinea pigs. Santa snorted in disgust. A guinea pig? You mean like a lab rat? 
You mean we're being used for some sort of experiment? Is that what you're saying? Dunno. But it does seem like a possibility, you know? They stood there for a few more minutes. No one speaking, until Santa turned and walked away from the winch. Junpei and Ace followed him. Alright, no more winches here. Back through C we go. Through A. Back down the stairs. Uh-huh. Teehee. There we are. Now then, let's see what's in the box. Hey, control panel for something. A clever and convenient name. I'll be right here. Ah, uh, maybe this hole is where the control panel goes. Well, there's only one way to find out. In you go. Dude, you did it. Everything looks all right. Okay, but what do we do now? Why don't you press the button next to it? <laughs> I don't think we've seen Ace do that pose yet. That looks so funny. The orange one? Yes. All right, I'll do that. Pushing. Sweet. All sorts of lights are lighting up on this thing. And, oh, yes. I think I just heard something turn on. Uh, oh? What's that? What happened? Junpei, look. The conveyor belt's moving. The conveyor belt? Well, I guess it's done moving now. There's still a bunch of coal on the belt, though. Looks like a bunch of it got dumped off at the end of the belt into that wooden box. Where the, we found the control panel. Hmm, coal. Coal, huh? Well, let's grab that coal, shall we? Hey, a box full of coal. Pop on over and around. Now, I actually believe it's this way. Yes. Pop these bad lads open. There's the hole that let us put coal into the furnace. Maybe if we get some coal in there and set it on fire. Okay, let's do it. All right, that's the last of it. No coal left in this box. And nothing. Great. Well, I guess I should have expected that. Why did I just think throwing coal into a cold furnace would do anything? Oh well, a man can dream. Junpei, explain it to me again. You're planning to stoke this furnace with coal, which will heat the water stored up in there and make steam, which will then drive something else. Am I correct? In other words, you want to generate enough pressure with the steam to power the turbine drive the steam engine, right? Uh, yeah, I guess that's, um, the gist of it. Hmm. Well, in that case, this isn't enough coal. This furnace is enormous. We're gonna need a whole hell of a lot more coal than just this. Very well, then. If the three of us get to work together, we should be able to manage to fill it much faster. I want to help, too. Man, I totally didn't even see her walk up on us. Are, are you feeling up to that? Y yes yeah, right. You look like you're one stiff breeze away from falling over, June. I think you'd better rest some more, all right? But I... No arguing. You need your rest. You just stay there. We'll handle it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I understand. All right. Time for some manly work. Let's get this coal in these furnaces. Man, this is a lot of work. All right, I think this should be sufficient. All right, now we just gotta light it. Junpei, hand me one of your matches. What makes you think I have matches? I see. Then how are we gonna light it? Perhaps there's a device nearby that will allow us to remotely ignite the coal. Let's take a look, shall we? Some sort of ignition device, huh? Let's give it a look, see? I believe there was something we saw on this letter. Hey, hey, is this? I think it might be. It probably is. I think this is how we ignite the furnace. That means that if you move that thing down. All right, let's do it. Here we go. Hey, Junpei, Ace, look at this. There's a big gear turning under the boiler here. Huh? Hey, look at that. Gold, silver, and a bronze gear. Oh, and there's a thing in those indentations there. The gears. They're spinning. What the hell are you two guys waiting for? Let's start looking. All right. Gear party it is. Hello. Oh. Thanks, gear. Oh, this is where the coral goes. Or would go if all three of these things weren't rusted shut. A bronze wheel. Hey. hey. Oh. And... 
friend. Ho ho. Tee. Look at that. A silver disc. And then, hop on over here. Oh, there's the busted winch. Hey, there we go. Looks like this thing unlocks the door. There's a depression here that looks like it's the outline of the three circles laid on top of each other in a triangle. Maybe, maybe we put these three discs that we found into this thing? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's stick them on in. Huh? That's odd. Nothing's happening. Maybe you're, I don't know, put them in the wrong places? Perhaps you have to have them facing the, you have them facing the wrong directions. Perhaps you should rotate the discs to make some sort of lines connect to one another? Hmm. Well, no harm in trying. Instructions for operation. When the disc is touching, it will rotate a certain amount. When the white arrow is touched, the discs are switched. Please note that when the discs are switched, the angles of the discs are reset. Good to note. Okay, so if I remember on the gears, the uh, gold was on the left side, the bronze was on the right side, and then they kind of had this red piece in the middle. If I recall. Hey, there we go. The red lines on those discs. I think maybe I can make a star polygon with these. Hey, hey. Just like that, the door opens. Awesome. Woohoo. Nothing to it. Big old room knocked out in no time. Yes, the door's open! Given the circumstances, Junpei's happiness was certainly understandable. Ace seemed to share his excitement. All right, Junpei. Why don't you go get June now? Santa and I will keep an eye on this door. Santa snorted. Why do we need to do that? Even if it shuts, we know how to solve the puzzle now. We can just open it again. Well, I suppose that's true. Shall all three of us go and collect June, then? Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Junpei handle it seemed irritated by something, however, and sat down on the stairs. So you are only interested in being contrary. A sighed with an air of a long-suffering parent. All right, I'll go get June. I'll be right back. Gave a quick nod to Santa and Ace, and dashed off down the stairs. Before long, he was back on the first floor, next to the conveyor belt, and June... As he drew closer, she stood up, slowly. Are, are you okay? He did his best to sound calm and nonchalant, but there was no hiding the genuine concern in his voice. Yes. I'm fine now. I'm sorry I made you worry. June blushed. He wasn't sure if she was embarrassed or still feverish. Just to make sure, he reached out and put his hand against her forehead. Good. You're feeling a lot better. She was feeling far less warm than she had earlier, but she still wasn't down to what seemed normal to him. Are you sure you're all right? He had to be sure. June gave him a look. Oh, you're such a warrior, Jumpy. Whoops. I mean, worrier. June giggled. He wasn't sure if she just made a joke or not, but seeing her face smile again made Junpei feel at ease. If she was well enough to smile and laugh, then she really was feeling much better. He gave her a friendly poke on the forehead. Let's go. Go where? Oh, right, I didn't tell you. Uh, we got the exit open, so... Oh, great! Let's go! June clasped her hands and nodded urgently. As they walked back towards the exit, Jupe noticed Santa sitting on the stairs. He was, however, holding something in his right hand and staring at it with a strange expression. Junpei and June slowed down and finally stopped in front of him. What are you looking at? Santa answered without looking up, his voice quiet. It's a photo. It's my sister. Sister? Santa, you got a sister? Santa simply nodded. Yeah. Kid was as cute as a button. June cocked her head, confused. She was only about an inch tall then? Santa glared at her. Ah, sorry. I guess an inch is still a little large for a button. Probably more like a half inch. Mm. Santa didn't smile or laugh. 
He simply turned back to his picture and spoke. I was her Santa Claus. The sudden revelation took Junpei by surprise. He had no idea what Santa meant. He glanced at June, who shook her head. She didn't know either. Have you ever heard the story of the two Santa Clauses? It goes that a long time ago, there were two Santas. One of them wore white, and the other wore black. The white Santa gave presents to good kids, and the black Santa played tricks on bad kids. They went on like this for a while, but eventually the black Santa's tricks started to get worse and worse. Pretty soon, the white Santa couldn't stand it anymore, and he stabbed the black Santa to death. When he stabbed the other Santa, the white Santa got blood all over his clothes, and that's why these days, his clothes are red. You could say that the red's all that's left of that black Santa. Junpei was silent. He could think of nothing to say. June was staring at Santa. Sadness plain on her face. He continued. I wonder which Santa I am. The white Santa or the black Santa? Hmm. 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 All right, let's go. Santa stood up suddenly. His downcast demeanor gone. He shoved the picture in his pocket and headed back up the stairs, taking the two, taking them two at a time. Junpei and June looked at one another. There was nothing they could think of to say. Hey, what are you two doing? Let's get moving. Come on! Santa's voice echoed across the room from above them. They nodded and followed him quickly up the stairs. Ace was waiting for them at the top. He was leaning against the handrail. He looked very tired. The door had shut, but it wasn't cause for concern. Junpei quickly solved the disc puzzle a second time, and the door opened once again. In single file, they walked through. After walking for nearly 15 feet, they found themselves in front of a metal door. It opened easily enough, and they passed through it as well. A new room stretched out before them. Is this a warehouse? No, I believe this is a cargo room. This must be where they store all of this vessel's freight. Hmm, there are wooden crates everywhere. I wonder how old they are. Junpei, Ace, and June had stopped unconsciously, pausing to take in their new surroundings. Santa's voice broke their momentary trace. Well, you probably ought to start finding the exit, right? Let's get going! Alright, into the cargo room. Let's begin a little, shall we? Oh, this track's great if I recall too. I love this. It... Wow. Whoop. Guess it's a little early. Alright, I'll play the room a little then. There are a bunch of bags here. I wonder what's in them. Whoa! It's a card with a headshot. That's Santa's Ooh. card. What's that? It's a card that has a headshot on it. A headshot? Yeah, I'm not really sure what purpose this card could possibly serve. And there's another bag right here. Oh, oh, it's the headshot of the ninth man. Interesting. Let's go over here, maybe. I wonder what's inside these crates. A bunch of wooden crates on the inside of the fence. Mm, there are three crates here, stacked up like stairs. We climb up there, I think we can get over the fence. Junpei, think you could take a look over that? Sorry, but no thanks. Why? I've, uh, got a bad feeling about it. Pussy. Okay, fine. I'll go. Please be careful, Santa. Yeah, but just in case. Wait, what's he gonna do with that screw? I don't see what throwing a screw at the fence is. Holy shit! <gasps> Ah! This... Oh, man. There's electricity running through that fence. Looks like it. Then we can't get back to the other side. We could jump off those crates, but we won't be able to get back. Hmm. Okay, that's spoopy. Hey, two more bags. 
Oh, this one's got Clover. Hi, Clover. And Snake. Oh, they're right next to each other. Oh, Miss Snake already. Oh, another bag there. This one's got seven. Hi, seven. Oh, hey, there's two more cards in here. Junpei. And June. Oh, they put their cards together. So cute. We've searched all the boxes. There's nothing in them. All right. So we probably need, like... How many cards do we have right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cards. We need two more cards, then. A box. There's nothing inside, though. Mm, these crates are quite large. They seem to have tied to one another with sturdy straps. Bum, bum. Box right there. Hey, there's a card for Ace. Hi, Ace. I just need one more. What if there's anything up these stairs? These stairs, they go up three stories. Well, what are you waiting for, Junpei? Whatever, I'm going. Hmm. This must be our door out then. This is the only door in here, except for the one we just came through. And this is the exit. No shit, Sherlock. Because it's locked. Is it an electronic lock? No, just a keyhole, right under the doorknob. So to open this door, we gotta find the key that fits that keyhole. Yeah. Interesting. Go up again. Okay, right. anything I know what to do here? The monitor's off. Mmm, I've got a green switch here and a red one. Some kind of lever. None of them seem to do anything, though. Maybe the power's off? Maybe. There's a single green light at the bottom, though. That means... Let's look. Hmm. Yeah, like a game. Well, there's six holes here. They look like jacks for headphone cables. Jacks, huh? Maybe if we put something in them? Yeah, something might happen. Okay, so we're gonna need to find some stuff for those, then. Pop on back down. So we can't do anything with these quite yet. Looks like we need one more. It's locked. Uh, we need a key. All the boxes have numbers on them. Do they... Oh? Ace bent down picked something up that had been sitting next to the box. Junpei, take a look at this. Cards. Hey, there's the eight Lotus card. Sweet, now we got all nine. Let's play around with it, shall we? They'd finally collected all nine picture cards. All that remained was to insert the cards into the slots at the front of each box. Junpei stared at the cards in his hands. Ace peered over his shoulder at them. You know which cards go in which box, yes? Junpei gave him a look. Uh, yeah. Of course I do. It's really obvious. You just match our numbers to the numbers on the boxes. So, for instance, the card with the picture of Ace will go into box one. The card with the picture of Snake goes into two, and so on. I see. Junpei thought he might have imagined it. He could have sworn Ace stiffened. I'll leave the rest to you. He quickly turned and walked away. Strange, Junpei thought. Oh well, whatever. Doing his best to clear his mind for the task at hand, he turned back towards the boxes. It was time to solve the puzzle of the nine boxes. Nine cards with pictures and nine boxes. Junpei stared at them for a moment and then began. Ace's card went into box one. Then Snake's into box two. Santa's into box three, Clover's into four, Junpei's into five, June's into six, seven into seven, Lotus into eight, and finally the ninth man's card went into box nine. As soon as he's inserted all the cards, woohoo, they opened. All nine box lids popped open at once. He peered inside. Each box was a single pin. They looked a little like screwing pins, but much thicker, or sewing pins. Screwing pins, okay. Jubei collected them all quickly and shoved them into his pocket. Sweet! So I bet you those pins are what we use on the device back there. So up the stairs we go. This one? Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy. Mm, there are six holes here. And it looks like the pins I just found would be perfect fit for them. The ones you found are the nine boxes, right? Well, why don't you try it? All right, let's see what happens. I think two, four, and six should go on the top part, and three, five, and seven on the bottom part. Well, some of them lit up. 
Yeah, three and six. I wonder if there's some kind of rule that determines which lights go on. Well, I put two, four, and six pins in the top part. Three, five, seven on the bottom. Hmm. You think? I think maybe it's the digital root? Oh, it's most certainly the digital root. It's always the digital root. Yeah, two plus four plus six equals twelve. Digital root of twelve is three. Therefore, light three turned on. Three plus five plus seven equals fifteen. Digital root of fifteen is six. Therefore, light six turns on. Makes sense, right? I see. Lights that match the digital root of the pins inserted on the top and lower parts will light up. Mm, so that's how it works. Well, there's one other thing I'd like to check. Well, if he wants to try, he's certainly welcome to. So, he put in one, two, and three pins on the top, and six, seven, and eight pins on the bottom. Oh? Mm, they turned off. Six plus seven plus eight equals 21. Digital root of 21 is three. Therefore, three turns off. One plus two plus three equals six. The digital root of six is six. Therefore, light six turns off. Oh, I get it now. The digital root for the pins you insert is the same as the number of the lights that are lit. Those lights turn off. Yeah, it looks like that's the trick. All right, now that we know how it works, you wanna give it a try? Wait, you know what you're supposed to do with these lights? Well, no, but I figured we could try and see if we turn them all on, you know? I just figure something's gotta happen if we manage that. Turn all the lights on, huh? Well, all right. Okay, Junbei, let's make sure you know how this works, all right? Pick one of the six holes, then pick one of the pins in your hand, and insert it into the hole. Keep it up until all six holes are filled. Once all the holes are filled, the lights with the numbers that correspond to the digital roots of the pins in the upper and lower parts will turn on. However, if the digital root corresponds to the light that's already lit on, the light will turn off. The goal is to turn all the lights on. All right, let's do this. Woohoo! Well, let's give it a shot, shall we? So, let's just do one, two, three, we'll do four, five, six. So that should be, those were the same numbers, weren't they? Whoopsies! All right. Uh, one, two, three, and then four, five, Seven. There we go. That's a little smarter on me. All right, then. Uh, to get one, we'll do one, seven, and eight. And we also need five, so we can do three, five, and six. Yeah. One didn't turn on, though. Must have watched something right there. Okay. Hmm. <sighs> Oh, it's because I did one, seven, and eight. That should have been four, seven, and eight. Okay, four, seven, and eight. That should give me the digital root of one. And then I want seven back on, which I can't do. I can get eight on though. So one, two, five. There we go. So two, three, four, and five. So I believe I would need seven, eight, and five for two. Then for Three, I would need. Hmm. Hmm. I can't do three with the remaining ones I have. Oh, wait, yes, I can. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, that's four. Well, whatever. I can get four at least. Sweet. I just need to get three and seven, right? Easy question mark. So, to get. Seven. I really just need any combo of nine. So let's go nine here, and then I just need to not use three. So we can go one and eight, and then to get three, I need to have three here. We can have four and five with it. There we go. That's all of them. Sweet. Ooh, it's an F. All the lights are on and the shutter's open. Hey, does that mean, yeah, we gotta do it again. Man, I thought I was doing so well. All right, so I actually think right here, we're gonna pause it for now. Because if I recall, this room's got quite a bit more to do. Plus, this F puzzle is annoying, if I recall. Uh, if you remember, F is hexadecimal for, oh, is it 15 or 16? It is 16. So we gotta make 16 
all across this thing. So I think we will come back to that next time and I will catch you all later. This is Scotty J signing off. Bye bye. Have a little groove before we go. All right, toodles. <laughs>